Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my beginner piano course level one. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. In the previous lesson, you learned about the pulse and note values. In this lesson, we're going to learn about time signatures, bars and bar lines. A time signature is basically a little symbol or indicator that tells us how many to count and how to organize the music into smaller, more manageable chunks. Music that's usually in four beats is going to sound more even and music that's in three beats is going to sound more like a dance. So all of these different time signatures are going to have a different character as well. For this lesson, we're just going to deal with one time signature, the easiest one, which is 4-4. Four, four. Now, as you can see, the time signature has two numbers, a top number and a bottom number. The top number of a time signature tells us how many beats we are going to have in every single bar of the music. And the bottom number of the time signature is going to tell us what kind or how long each beat is going to be. So in this case, we have four beats in every bar and the bottom number four stands for crotchets or quarter notes. So that means that each beat in the pulse is going to be equal to a quarter note. So that means in other terms that we can fit in four quarter notes into one bar or two half notes or one whole note or semi brief. The time signature always has to come at the beginning of the music and we don't need to rewrite it at the beginning of each line, just at the very beginning of the piece. So what is a bar line and what are bars? If you look at this example on the screen, you can see the music is broken into smaller chunks and these little chunks or bars in American measures are divided by a bar line. And this bar line is going to be inserted after every fourth beat because the time signature says that we can have four beats in each of these bars. So as you can see the numbers, it doesn't matter what kind of note values we have in each measure or bar, as long as they add up to four crotchet beats or four quarter note beats. So you can have four quarter notes, you can have two quarter notes and one half note. Any combination that's going to make up four counts is going to fit into one bar. Then you put a bar line and start again the next bar with four counts and so on. And this way music is easier to read and is going to be more manageable. And we can also refer to these measure numbers or bar numbers if you just want to practice certain sections of the music. Because you can imagine if there is a 16 page piece and there are no bar lines, you would never see where the beginning and where the end is. Now one important thing about bars or measures is that the first beat in 4-4 four four is always going to be a little bit stronger than the rest of the beats. So number one is stronger, two, three, four is a little bit lighter. And the reason for that is if none of the beats are stronger than the others, as a listener, you wouldn't know where a new bar starts. So by making the first beat a little bit stronger than the rest, we can perceive with our ears that that's the start of a new bar and the music is going to get a, a more rhythmical feel to it. In the previous lesson, we counted note values for their actual value. So one for the quarter note, one, two, for the minim and one, two, three, four for the semi brief or whole note. Now that we introduced time signatures, we have to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four continuously because the music is now in four, four. And the first count should always be a little bit stronger. Now this can make counting a little bit confusing because you see one and two count notes, but you're still counting three, four. So in order to help that, let's have a look at this example here, which is number four from the previous lesson. And let's write underneath the beat numbers. And now you can see that the first crotchet is going to be beat number one. The second crotchet is going to be beat number two. And the minim is going to be beat number three and four because it's two beats long. So it has to take up the last two beats of the bar. Let's try to tap now example number four with counting one, two, three, four. So I'm going to close my piano and tap on the lid. I'm going to count in four counts and then I come in on the one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's play example number four again and I'm going to play the accompaniment and the middle C and you can join in after the fourth beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Now let's have a look at example number five. And again, come in after beat number four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And let's have a look at example number six as well. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we play the same examples from the previous lesson, but counting according to the time signature. If you enjoy this lesson, make sure to check out the premium version of this course, which is going to include a free method book, lots of filmed video tutorials for sight reading exercises, technical exercises, performance pieces, and best of all, you're going to get personal feedback from me to make sure your progress is as smooth and efficient as it can get.